Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I'm going to show you five projects I did recently that I simply didn't film at the time. As you know, filming something makes it take at least two to three times longer than actually just doing the project, and I'm usually in a hurry. This one is number three. Number one, the ring roller. This is a 3D printed body and then a shaft out of an old printer cut into thirds and six 608 bearings and a couple other little screws. It can go from about five inches down to nothing. And I use this to roll all sorts of things. By putting some 608 bearings on the shafts, I can increase the shaft diameter and then also roll tighter rings. This is some steel strapping here that I used for a project that you'll see here that's number five, I believe. Tightening these bolts down makes the ring tighter. I can just push and pull the metal through on this roller and you can see it getting tighter and tighter. Now, not just rolling rings, this thing can also be used to flatten stuff too. I used it to flatten these drip edge pieces for, to support these lights in the valley this year. That worked out really well. And of course, the shafts can be removed when you want to remove your ring. But for a ring like this, you can just unsnap it and it holds its shape. Just like so. How about that? 3D prints. Number two, the O-ring runout. If you remember from my sander project, it had quite a bit of runout because the wood that the sanding uh, disc mounts to isn't flat. But I recently took up about half that run out and I'm much happier with my sander now. What I did was I unbolted every other bolt here in the back of my hub and then I inserted rubber washers between the other three bolts. These act as springs and push the wood away from the hub. But now I have three points of contact and three points define a plane. And so by torquing these uh, bolts down to different amounts, I was able to take out about half this run out and this out worked really well. Hopefully this will inspire you uh, for one of your solutions to one of your problems. Number three, the screw box. I have lots of one pound boxes of screws, more than I even have here. But I made this little holder out of one eighth inch Baltic birch and it's supported by a single screw here in the wall on a little key slot. There's even a little tray at the top for miscellaneous things. I bandsawed out some finger holes so that you can easily get each box. And you can see they come out very easily. I used some spacers for each of these shelves so I didn't have to measure them. The spacers were slightly taller than each box. Number four, the temporary truck rack. Recently I had to move some metal that was way longer than my truck. The front part of the metal, well actually the front third, sat on the cab, but this back end had to be supported. And so a couple two by twos and some plywood here allowed me to make this little temporary rack. This has a small base screwed to the bottom and then this gets secured against the side of the bed with some straps. And then of course your load, the back end of the load, sits on this crossbar and then gets lashed to the vertical bar and the crossbar during transport. Now the genius here though are my three equally spaced holes in my plywood uh, gusset here. And the trick is to hit this third hole just right and then you move it down as if you're making a, if you ever made box joints on a table saw, this is like using a box joint jig where you have the indexing pin. And look at that, a perfect hole. So now I take these out, move it down, and then drill that third hole again. And here we are to number five, the Campfire Coffee Roaster. This is version one, made out of copper mostly. That copper shaft that holds everything together was actually split in two, and then that's what supports the steel mesh over on the left. Those rings that I rolled give the mesh a cylindrical form, otherwise it could just crumble in anything else. And then you can see that the mesh was screwed in four places on each side, and the split copper there also serves as paddles to create the, the tumbling action. Problem with this one was that it got so hot inside this little tent that my friend made, the solder that joins the mesh to the copper actually melted. And this is quarter inch mesh, which apparently was a little bit too big for some of his coffee beans, and they fell through. So it was back to the drawing board. But it all pivots here in this central T that I bored out with a 5 8 inch drill bit. Version 2 here you can see there's a small copper fitting that I embedded into a drilled hole there in that paver. And then this whole thing gets secured with a cotter pin down into the base. Here you can see the door on the left side just secured with some pins. But the difference here is that the back end of that mesh is secured with solder once again. But it's made pretty with that little uh, galvanized steel cone. I use my cone calculator spreadsheet for that. Now version three was totally different. 
because the solder simply was not holding on version 2. This was a mesh holder for kitchen utensils. Here it is over our simulated fire on a pole in the living room to show you how this works. It can go in and out and it rotates here around this board out T fitting at the top. This metal cross back here gives this whole thing some rigidity. Inside there you can see a steel paddle that's riveted in three places to provide tumbling action. But the real genius of this one probably, other than the fact that this is a repurposed you know, thing, I didn't have to reinvent the drum, the real genius here is this door, which pivots like so. Much, much easier to do. No pins to pull or anything like that. Nothing to fall off. And it's secured against that paddle on the one side, so it can only pivot one way. But you can see here how the, the T-fitting still goes in and out on this shaft so that you can change the position of this over your fire. Ah, that's looking good. Those marbles smell amazing. Oh, yeah. About 10 more minutes. And then here you can see to open the door, simply just pop it, and it all comes out. And this entire thing, of course, you know, is also connected with hitch pins. So you pull a pin and you can take this whole thing off its mount. But my friend was really, really stoked about this. He's really into roasting his own coffee, so he really appreciated this. Well, there's five simple projects that I did recently that hopefully you can do yourself. Or at least take inspiration from this. Or crib directly if you want to. I don't care. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.